My name is Douglas Huff, and I teach philosophy at Gustavus. I've been here 37 years, and uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it, I think. My um, path to philosophy is a little bit unusual. When I was in college, I went to Concordia College in Moorhead, and when I was in college, I majored in English. And I took the philosophy, I, t I took a philosophy course, the Intro to Philosophy in my senior year. Uh, in order to, you know, to fulfill a distribution requirement for graduation. And, uh, but my plans were to go to law school and perhaps even go into politics. And I took this one philosophy course and we read uh, Rene Descartes, Meditations on First Philosophy, and I remember uh, reading the second meditation where Descartes gives a proof for his own existence, and I had never seen anything so clever in my life. And that literally did change my life. So I gave up on my legal, political aspirations and uh, went to graduate school in philosophy. Even though other disciplines split off from philosophy, philosophy, uh, pure and simple, can be reduced to asking a certain kind of question. What are you willing to say? We're going to uh, prove the existence of God. It's going to be the ontological argument. And we'll go to this, the source. <coughs> We have the idea of God. Second premise, it is greater to exist than not to exist. Two premises the inductive, and for this particular deductive argument, <coughs> therefore, God necessarily exists. Uh, but I'm also a playwright. And I've, uh, I've had nine uh, plays produced professionally around the country and in England. And this is my absolute latest play, Far Shore. And it's based on the life and work of uh, uh, Ambedkar. Ambedkar was a, a national hero in India and one of the leaders of the liberation movement against the British. So I can bring it out. This is the, this is the movie. A far shore, and what uh, what you do, what many people do, is that you put the uh, scenes up for it tells the whole story, and then uh, you put them like this so you can actually move them around if you need to. This is my uh, college in Oxford, uh, University College. This is from my Peace Corps days because what we're looking at is the uh, Hagia Sophia, Saint Sophia's in um, Istanbul. Uh, that's in the background. In front is Suleiman the Magnificent's tomb and his favorite wife, Roxolana. <laughs> My wife once said that it's not very interesting living with someone who reads eight hours a day. And so, so and she's joking, of, I hope, but she's uh, suggesting that I don't have a lot of hobbies and, uh, and outside activities. I, I spend most of my time reading and writing. Well, I, I've got really good pipes, but this is the one, this is my favorite, and I smoked, oh, there, <laughs> I smoked this one for years. And uh, then I stopped, uh, I stopped smoking a pipe, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And I was just looking, uh, looking at the number of pipes I have at home. This one is, comes from uh, England. Travel is a, uh, stimulates me. Uh, intellectually. I love to be in foreign countries, I love to live around foreign people, uh, and I, uh, I am never more um, intellectually active than when I'm abroad. For a while I was convinced I had to go overseas to write every play I wrote, but now I've solved that problem. I wrote this one here. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, but it's, uh, so if I had one activity that I would love to do more, and that's travel. I would love to see everything. I love teaching, and I love uh, I love preparing for class. There's, that might be a unique thing. That's the one that I love preparing for class more than actually going to class. And you know, I enjoy myself in class. There's no question about that. But uh, um, no, I'm surrounded here, at Gustavus, with some wonderful teachers that all that exhibit a lot of patience and tolerance and wisdom with their students. <laughs> You just got to make it your rephrase the question. <laughs>